Hello, welcome back, my royal rogues. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the royal rogue. And today we realize the Pandora's box has been opened due to the recent stint of the Duke and Duchess of Sausages in New York. I'm going to get this out of the way right now. Camilla Tomini for The Telegraph. The Sussexes are fragile, fraught, and lacking romance like any couple with young kids. Five years after their wedding, the omens are bad as Harry and Meghan seem to be heading in different directions. Sounds a lot like I have been saying uh, since 2021 that they will eventually split their brands and we are finally watching it in real time. And by the way, I want to remind you that it would be actually good for them if they do it right, that is. The Duchess once described them as uh, moving together uh, like salt and pepper, but they seem to be heading in opposite directions. Megan looking forward while Harry dwells in the past. The extraordinary events of this week, with the couple claiming they have been involved in a near-catastrophic car chase at the hands of a ring of highly aggressive paparazzi in New York, seem to expose a chasm between the, her desire for fame and Harry's quest for privacy. Yeah, this is more or less when I tell you that they are not doing things the right way. In fact, let's fast forward to the part that Tommy refers directly to Harry and Meghan's marriage troubles. Such is their independence from each other that the owner of a leading hotel chain in Montecito recently told the Daily Telegraph they have a room set aside for Harry where he occasionally stays on his own. The Duke has also been known to stay at the other exclusive San Vicente bungalows when visiting L.A., which is a two-hour drive from the couple's 11 million mansion. Uh, those are rather harsh claims. But either way, I have the feeling that Tommy is not going to be sued for this because it sounds plausible. Now, there's a fact about men. We sometimes like to be left alone, especially if we, are, have, we have a solid purpose and are working towards it. We need a bit of isolation to build. For an instant, I could give Harry the benefit of the doubt, but then I remember, nah, he's not building anything. He has no plans. He's got no purpose. He's just drifting aimlessly in the sea of victimhood to catch the next scandal wave. And something that I cannot understand if how you manage to have a 16-bathroom house, or more specifically, for our means, nine bedrooms, can't you, like, merge two of those bedrooms in the greatest man cave that you can imagine? Like a bat cave, perhaps? Only that this would not be Batman, but instead ginger bat? But no, there's no bat cave, no man cave, no ginger cave, anything. Just a cheap motel, or whatever you want to call it, away from home. By the way, I asked my AI tool to give an image of Harry outside a cheap motel and it gave me Grand Theft Auto Harry. And then Princess Nini on Twitter sent me this Grand Theft Auto paparazzi edition. Sorry if we don't know who was the original artist, but it's just perfect. And speaking of cheap accommodations, we need to talk about this. Harry and Meghan's New York City car chase happened because they were too cheap to pay for hotel. Source. Well, I would not be surprised if they are investing all their money in buying awards for Megan and headlines for both their brands, not to mention the usual delicacy that they enjoy every now and then. The entitled couple allegedly demanded the Carlisle, the late Princess Diana's favorite hotel, give them a discounted room for their New York City visit this week. Uh, you know, usual influencer shenanigans. According to law enforcement sources, bosses at the Carlisle refused the hefty discount, so the embattled pair instead stayed at a friend's house on the Upper East Side. But when the paparazzi began following them Tuesday night from the Sigfield Theater, the duo didn't want to lead the photographers back to their friend's home and reveal they, where they were staying. A New York City law enforcement source told Page Six, they should have just gotten a hotel for the safety or of everyone. Instead, they were cheap and wanted a free place to stay. It is not surprising that the Carlisle did not want to give them a discount. It is surprising that they still have friends, but you never know. Because 
Even Gail King, who we thought was a staunch supporter of the sausages, said this. Major networks such as CBS hinted that the incident had been overblown, with Gail King revealing it was a scary moment, but police tell us it was not as serious as Harry and Meghan said. Even if Gail King is part of the rumors, the blossoming Magnolia summarizes what's been said about the mysterious friend. Apparently, they were staying at Gail King's New York City house during their stay for the fake award. Who thinks Gail and the ex-royals will leap at the chance at an interview? It will be their Harry and Meghan Smollett moment. I can't wait to see them make further fools of themselves. <laughs> Me neither. But wait a minute. We haven't finished the story of Harry staying by himself at other places besides his 16-bathroom mansion. The Duke has also been known to stay at the over-exclusive San Vicente bungalows when visiting Leigh, which is a two-hour drive from the couple's 11 million mansion. That seems to be his escape place, said a source of the super secretive and selective members club in West Hollywood, which, unlike the Soho house chain also frequented by the Sussexes, bans journalists from joining. A refuge from the rigors of parenting two children under four, Harry has apparently stayed there after attending Barry's boot camp, a high-octane cardio fitness class at the Nervy Beverly Center. One friend described the couple as like any parents of such young kids, frazzled. Uh, no, seriously, maybe he needs some time off to ponder on his aspirations, but imagine that even their royal paws are mocking Harry Meghan over hysterical New York City car chase story. The backlash appears to be schadenfreude for friends of the royal family with one Paul of Prince William's poking fun at the Sussexes while speaking with the Daily Beast on Friday. I thought they were leaving the royal family for a quieter life. If flashbulbs give Harry flashbacks, I don't understand why he is going to award ceremonies. The anonymous friend mocked. He is right. And they added, William and Catherine have put up with uh, stuff like this in the past. Everyone understands his anger at the phot photographers, but making historical statements doesn't help matters, especially when, as the Queen might have said, recollections may vary. And meanwhile, one friend of King Charles also spoke with the publication, saying that the monarch will completely understand Harry being upset at being pursued by the paparazzi. He knows how scary it can be, the insider declared. But he has always tried to get Harry to understand that complaining about photographers or the media is pointless. It just makes it all worse. I believe uh, Gingerbread just needs a bit of time to step back and reflect. But you know that, you mean know that this is not gonna work because uh, he's just not allowed to step back. That is part of his curse. And I have the feeling that more sooner than later, he will be preparing a brand new attack on the royal family because it's obvious that it is the only way he can keep relevant when there is no people left to be fooled by the facade. My royal rogues, we are 120,000 now thanks to you. I couldn't be more grateful because it is you who make these videos so fun to make. Remember to like this video and the most important words, much love and bliss.